The Early Childhood Commission wants to guarantee a strong foundation for our children's future academic success, and so they have set 12 standards to ensure this. Joining us to have the discussion is Community Relations Manager Tanisha Miller. Good morning, Tanisha. Good morning, Tanisha. How are you doing? Good morning. I'm wonderful. Thank you. Sure. How many early childhood institutions do we have in Jamaica? Or at least registered ones. <laughs> we have just over 2,400 institutions. Ah. And of that amount, uh, a little over 400 are infant schools, infant departments, which means those are operated and owned by the government of Jamaica. Mm -hmm. can, can, can we break them down for me? Because I know some schools, as you say, have primary and infant schools. Mm -hmm. A lot of churches operate basic schools. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are private, you know, people decide I'm going to do a basic school. Yes. Is that still pretty much how much the landscape is for early childhood here? Um, yes. So, so far we actually have three categories. Mm -hmm. So as I said before, we have the infant school, infant departments, those are owned and operated by the government of Jamaica. And then we have private public. So those are some basic schools. Why private public is that they are privately owned maybe by um, someone, a church, as you said, a community. Mm -hmm. But it is just that they would have benefited from the government by getting subsidies and nutrition grants and material grants. Okay. And then you have the private ones. So those are like our prep schools. So they get no assistance from the government as it relates to monetary contributions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So those are the three categories. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about early childhood institutions. Define them in very clear terms because we're talking about you know, just zero to like a daycare versus, mm -hmm. you know, like a toddlers and mm -hmm. so on. Just define that for us. Early childhood institutions, they are, um, we have our brain builder centers, which are the government daycare centers. So we have children from zero to three years old. Mm -hmm. And of course, parents, I must say that the brain builder centers are free of cost to parents. Okay. It means that you take the babies there when you have to go back to work. And of course, as it relates to nutrition and early stimulation and protection, that is in the space for them. We have our basic schools and we have our infant schools and infant departments, as I would have said before. Mm -hmm. So um, when you look right across the board at what it is that we offer within that space, right up it is zero to six years old mm. so for our public listening once it is that you have four to six children in a space mm -hmm. for six hours or more for at least four days for the week you're operating an early childhood institution repeat that please four to six students once you have at yeah. least four to six children mm -hmm. between zero to six years old in a space and you're operating for at least four days out of the week you're operating an early childhood institution. Can anybody establish a, a, an early childhood institution? Um, quote unquote, anybody, yes. Mm -hmm. But uh, the basic criteria is you must be at least 18 years or older. Mm -hmm. You must be fit and proper, which means that you have to get your checkup by a doctor because we do not want certain persons within the space with our children. Okay. And once you have those, of course, and you are able to provide developmentally appropriate care and stimulation within that space, then you can operate an early child institution. No police record check, no background check? Yeah, man, all of that come afterwards, you know. All of that have to come afterwards. Okay. But if it is that you just want to start the conversation, Aye. then those are the minor things. Okay. okay. But then when it is that you come into us and you start having that conversation, mm -hmm. of course you have to do your police fingerprinting because you don't want a pedophile in the space. Mm -hmm. You can't be convicted of certain offenses, like under the Sexual Offenses Act. Okay. You can't be um, convicted a fraud and all of that so that is why the police fingerprinting is important and of course we offer training as well so once it is that you're a part of an institution we do our monthly development training or zone training so persons for example have to be trained in pediatric first aid mm -hmm. if a child is there and the child is choking what do i do mm -hmm. or do i take up the phone and call the clinic or call an ambulance no you are trained so you know what to do until help has arrived mm -hmm. so we offer those training for our, our practitioners. Where can we learn about the process? So again, I just want, for those persons who are interested in starting a, an, an early childhood institution, maybe, maybe they've met the, character, um, the criteria already in terms of the number of hours, the number of children, and the number of th days per week. Mm -hmm. What's the, what are those steps that will ultimately get you fully registered, et cetera? Contact the Early Childhood Commission. It is also on our website, www.ecc.gov.jm. Mm -hmm. And we have the processes there. The application form will be sent to you. An inspector will be assigned to come and inspect your space. 
after the inspection report is generated, then a development officer will take that inspection report and assist you to develop the space. All right, so you've set 12 standards. Yes. And um, that's with the hope of guaranteeing a strong foundation mm -hmm. for the children's future academic. Can we just name, I know, and I know they're pretty detailed, mm -hmm. but can we just name the 12 so we know what they are? Right. Mm -hmm. So for our viewers, these are 12 standards. It starts with standard one staffing, and that is where the police fingerprinting comes in. Mm -hmm. So we want to ensure that the staff that are in the space space, they are appropriate for our babies. Mm -hmm. No parent wants to leave a child in a space and then come back and hear that, hey, your child has been abused or anything happened to your child. Mm -hmm. And then standard two speaks to the developmental educational programs. So we want to ensure that a program is created and there, so the child is not just in the space watching television right. or on a gadget, on a tablet or anything like that. Because mm -hmm. we do not believe in screen time for our children. Mm -hmm. And then standard three speaks to interaction and relationship with children. So practitioners need to build that bond with the children that are in the space. Mm -hmm. Then standard four speaks to physical environment. Absolutely. What is in the space for those children? Mm -hmm. Is it that you have the equipment and the toys and the slides and all of that? Is it, is it fenced is around? It, uh, yes. Uh, security. So mm -hmm. even with um, all those slides in the space, mm -hmm. are they too close? They're supposed to be at least six feet apart because we do not want accidents mm -hmm. to happen. Mm -hmm. And then you have standard five that speaks to indoor and outdoor equipment furnishing and supplies again that speak to the same outdoor the same equipment, right? right. Yeah. Yes. So are our babies being placed on the floor, in the cribs, on mm. beds? Where are they placed? Mm. And remember that all these are legal requirements. Mm -hmm. You're not, if it is a feel like doing it today and not do it. You have to have it. it. You must comply with these to be certified. Mm -hmm. And then standard six speaks to health. We have standard seven that speaks to nutrition. We believe that our children should not be, be fed with cheese chips and bag juice. Yeah but nutritional meals. And hence so you provide a manual as well to our institution where they can follow and use that yeah. um, actually. Some fruits and veg and things. Fruits and veg and mm. some school will have fruit days and Go. water days. Go. So we ask our practitioners to try as best as possible to stick to those nutrition guides. Mm. And then you have the safety. Mm. So that speaks about the fire equipment being in place. Mm. This is where the firefighter comes in. Cover up the socket, them exactly. so they're putting them not shut. Them, them, right. them finger in it right. and stuff <laughs> like that having a fire extinguisher in place. Mm -hmm. And then standard nine, child rights and child protection. Yeah, a lot of people out there abusing the children, beating them, pinching them. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that our listeners would have seen this quite often in our news where a child has been abused. And they were like, no, but the teacher just pinched pinch for him so long. That is not abuse. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is abuse. There is always an alternative way mm -hmm. of um, reprimanding a child, Don't basically. pinch nobody's child. Don't pinch nobody's child. Mm -hmm. And then standard 10 speak to interaction with parents and community members. Okay. We don't want the parents to just take the child to the school Drop gate them and leave them. Mm -hmm. No, have a conversation with the teacher to say, what is going and on with, with the other child? parents? And with have the other a, parents? Yes, attend PTA meetings. Correct, correct. A assist the school in building that bond between the school and the community. Mm -hmm. And then we go to standard 11 that speak to administration. Things must be in place. You must have documentations for the children, their immunization cards, their birth certificate. Every child must have a file at the school and every practitioner must have a file as well. Mm -hmm. And then standard 12 that speak to finances. When does you collect the school fee? How do you spend it? Mm -hmm. Do you have a record? You know, you have a cash flow. Then a food, not then for the children. Exactly. The money right. never. And even when you get the government grant, mm -hmm. how is it spent? Is it recorded as to what is it you use that money for? Right. Are they audited, these institutions? Yes, our institutions are audited. Our auditors go in from time to time and they audit the institutions. We actually um, let the institution start the process mm -hmm. by providing a 401 form. So it gives detail as to what is it they spend that money mm -hmm. for. So if schools fail to meet the standards, uh, what is the repercussion? Uh, we work with them, okay. so there's a difference. So when it is they meet the 12 legal standards, which mm -hmm. are these, mm -hmm. then they would have been given a certificate uh. of uh, right. So they are certified. Mm -hmm. But then it is we ask the school to be registered with the institution, mm -hmm. with the Early Childhood Commission, sorry, where they're given a permit 
to operate. Excellent. So once it is that the school has a permit to operate. Means they met the standards. Right. We work with them and ensure no and ensure that they meet the twelve standards uh. so that they can be certified. And maintain compliance. And maintain compliance. So inspections are done. We try to visit a school at least once for the year mm -hmm. to ensure that hey if you are certified, what is that meaning in the space? Is it that you need to be recertified? And of course we have schools that have been recertified. Okay. All right. Great. But we work with them. And also, we have programs, for example, Professional Development Institute. Mm -hmm. We work with the practitioners during that. So uh, the next Professional Development Institute will be May 22nd mm -hmm. to 26th at the Jamaica Conference Center. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much, Miss. We and have to where, go. where can we find more information? Your, your Early Childhood Commission early website. Early Childhood Commission, our website, www.ecc.gov.jm. That's the community, community Relations Manager with the Early Childhood Commission, Tanisha Miller. All right, after the break, we take another book off the shelf.